Es ist eine globale Herausforderung, die nur gemeinsam bewältigt werden kann. Denn wir haben alle nur eine Erde. Die Förderung der Gebäudesanierung Ende dieses Monats ausläuft. In light of an increasingly dire climate crisis, countries across the globe have committed to a climate neutral future. So in today's video, I'll be sharing with you just exactly how Jonathan and I benefited from government programs right here in Germany to build our sustainable home. And I'll be sharing all of the resources and tips so that you can do it too. As many of you guys know, we live in Freiburg and Breisgau, in the southwest corner of Germany. A place that's been touted by German media and in a bit of a city PR campaign as Germany's green city. And sure, the emphasis that Freiburg puts on climate-friendly policies and investment in renewable energy sources is one of the main things that I love about living here. But turn on any TV right now and you're well aware that in addition to a climate crisis, recent geopolitical events have turned up the heat for both reducing energy consumption and increasing energy independence. And I mean turn up the heat quite literally because it's the end of July and right now it's hot, hot, hot. A scorching heat wave, a record busting heat wave, the record temperatures as much of Europe. It's so hot. But it's not all politics. As the temperatures across the globe get warmer and warmer due to climate change, it has devastating effects for our environment. But the problem is ending our dependency on fossil fuels and living a more sustainable life is often easier said than done. Plus, going green usually takes a lot of green. So what I would like to focus on in this video today is to share with you what programs are out there that you or I or any other everyday citizen right here in Germany can benefit from in order to make our homes more sustainable. What subsidies are rolling out? What subsidies are rolling back? because yeah, these things change quite literally from year to year and even month to month. It's, it's a lot to keep up with. Because one of the big cornerstones of Germany's plan for a greener future is to actually make everyday citizens a core strategy for reaching their targets. But like I said, there's a lot of strategies, there's a lot of subsidies, there's a lot of programs, and it gets confusing. So I'm gonna do my best to lead you all through it. Let's get started. Okay, so while I might happen to live in Germany's sunniest city, that doesn't mean that the rest of the country is that way. But despite being among the countries with the least sunshine hours, Germany is one of the largest solar power producers in the world, with an installed capacity of nearly 60 gigawatt in 2021. The country ranked fourth globally after leading the field for several years. Unfortunately, if you're new to the solar power game like we are, a lot of the subsidies that used to exist in Germany for putting solar panels on your house have actually been phased out over time. But that's mostly because the cost of solar panels has gone down significantly and the government subsidy to further bring down the cost isn't really seen as necessary anymore. In addition, while the feed-in tariff, which is the price that you were paid by generating electricity at your house and feeding it back into the power grid via solar, is actually lower than the price for purchased electricity. Therefore, generating as much electricity as possible and being able to store it and use it for yourself kind of makes the most financial sense right now. However, although energy storage costs have fallen sharply in recent years, for most people, it's still too expensive without subsidy programs. What I was able to find was that each kilowatt hour of storage capacity costs around 1100 euros. Now, there are a number of regional programs actually aimed at helping you achieve different storage solutions. And I'm going to go ahead and leave a link down in the description below of this video if you're interested in actually looking to see what kind of regional programs are available in your neck of the woods. But the state program that's actually run right here in Baden-Württemberg is called the Netzdienstliche Photovoltaik Batteriespeicher. Netzdienstliche 
photovoltaic battery speicher. Speicher. Battery speicher. It's a grid assisted photovoltaic battery storage system. The short summary of this fund used to invest in stationary grid assisted battery storage systems in combination with new photovoltaic installations connected to the distribution grid. The funding program grants a subsidy per kilowatt hour of storage capacity and the amount of the subsidy depends on the installed capacity of the photovoltaic system that's set up with the battery storage in your home. So in Baden-Württemberg, if a storage unit is installed in connection with a photovoltaic system with a nominal output of up to 30 kilowatt peak, a subsidy of 200 euros per kilowatt hour of storage capacity is granted. Plus what is really cool actually about this program right here in Baden-Württemberg is that there's also additional funding available throughout the framework of this program. For example, if a grid supporting charging point for electric vehicles is also set up, you can actually qualify for a one-time bonus of 500 euros. And this funding can actually be combined with other public funded programs like at the federal level, which is pretty cool. And speaking of electric vehicles, we've been pretty open about the fact that we have future plans to actually invest in an electric vehicle. Our plan currently is to have our business purchase it in January of next year. And although you don't have to purchase an at-home charging station for your vehicle, you can just plug it into the wall if you want. Our new home is actually pre-wired for a charging station. It was one of the requirements to meet with the KFW standards, which I'll actually talk to you about here in just a little bit. But charging points and electric vehicles could be a really important part of the overall sustainable process because the reality of the situation is that Germany really does have quite the love affair with automobiles. So despite that in one of my last videos where I sung the praises of Germany's walkable, livable cities, Germans still love their cars. We need a car. And although we've been able to get by up until this point with car sharing, now that we've actually moved away from the city center and we have a child and dogs and yeah, I mean, having our own personal vehicle is quickly becoming something that's kind of a necessity for us. And we really like the idea of having an electric vehicle in conjunction with solar on our roof and a storage battery in our house so that we can actually power our vehicle off of renewables. The only nationwide private EV charging incentive, according to my knowledge, was a 900 euro subsidy that was offered by the German state-owned development bank, KFW. And I say was because here, once again, this is another subsidy that has actually been rescinded as of late. According to their website, they're no longer accepting applications. Now, that doesn't mean that they won't offer this again, maybe potentially in the future. It's just not something that's available to you right now. But there are still a number of state and municipal and even energy provider led incentives that can actually help with the cost of either the purchase or installation of an electric vehicle charge charger in your home. For example, the German city of Limburg is offering a 300 euro incentive per charging point. As of July 1st, this funding is actually still available, but I do know that a similar incentive that was going on in Munich has since expired. But again, it's not to say that it couldn't be renewed again year to year as more funding becomes available. So it's really important that if this is something you're interested in to again, check with your local municipality and check frequently as well as just checking with your energy provider to see if there's any incentives that they're offering. Hi guys, I hope you're enjoying this video. And if you're new to our channel, welcome. We have been blown away by the recent jump in subscriber count and are so happy that you are here. But to be honest with you, we're still very much a new channel and have yet to figure out the secret sauce to success. Now, of course, the most important part to growing your channel is making quality content. But the unfortunate part of YouTube is that sometimes, no matter how much research, writing, filming, or editing you do, none of it really matters if people don't click on your video in the first place. You have to first grab a viewer's attention before you can share with them your great experiences or ideas. So that thumbnail that intrigued you enough to click on this video, I made that myself with some new perspective on graphic design and YouTube marketing thanks to the one hour course on Skillshare called Make Great YouTube Thumbnails by Evan from the powerhouse YouTube channel, Polymatter. And again, guys, we're only a little over a year in and actually running a YouTube channel. 
we're still very much trying to figure out who we are and what kind of content you guys want to see. So being able to take classes like this one from Skillshare are really so important for me to learn and invest in the long-term growth on this platform. And thanks to my membership with Skillshare, I have unlimited access to an online learning community with thousands of inspiring classes for anyone who loves learning and wants to explore their creativity and learn new skills. So if you're ready to learn something new, Skillshare really is the perfect place to start. From photography and illustration to graphic design, freelancing, cooking classes, and gardening, you can find classes that'll match your goals and interests taught by industry leading experts. So if you're ready to learn a new skill, head over to Skillshare by clicking the first link down below in the description. And because they're sponsoring our video today, I can actually get you your first month completely free. Again, just click the first link to join. And as always guys, a heartfelt thank you to all of you who have followed us along from the very beginning and a big welcome for all of you who have just stumbled upon our channel and are now diving into our videos. I'm so looking forward to the future of this channel and bringing more content your way. Now, let's get back to the video. All right, so last but not least, the probably biggest government program that we participated in for the purchase of this very home that I am recording this video in was through the KFW. For those of you that aren't familiar with the KFW, they are a development bank that was founded after the Second World War in 1948. The Marshall Plan, also known as the European Recovery Program, was a US program providing aid to Western Europe following the devastation of World War II. However, whereas other EU countries spent the money directly on the reconstruction of cities, industries, and infrastructure, which were heavily damaged during the war, Germany used a significant portion of those funds to start an investment bank that is still funding capital improvements today, which is pretty cool. And actually they do a lot, not just related to housing, but as it pertains to this video, I'd like to outline some of the programs that you can actually benefit from, whether you're buying a new construction home or an existing home or even rehabilitating your own home to make it more sustainable and energy efficient. And I'll let you know about what our experience has been like working through it thus far. The KFW program is actually really nice because the loans of the KFW subsidy are usually cheaper than a normal mortgage. Plus, KFW funding can not only be combined with a traditional mortgage, but the different subsidy programs can also be combined with each other. This means that you can actually benefit from multiple programs and even multiple loans within the KFW simultaneously. However, there are many different tiers to the KFW program, and the incentives and the requirements change depending on whether you're talking about new construction or an existing home. So let's go ahead and get started first with what are exactly the different incentives that are available to you if you're interested in actually purchasing a new home in Germany. So way back in 2009, a reference building was defined in the energy saving ordinance, the KFW Efficiency House 100, which corresponds to the minimum energy standard requirements. A KFW 70 efficiency house would therefore only use 70% of the energy per square meter of living space per year that a KFW efficiency house 100 requires. The energy standards are currently further subdivided into the KFW efficiency house 55 and 40. In these homes, the energy requirement is 55 or 40% of that reference building. So the big takeaway here is that the lower the number, the higher the efficiency. Now, there has been no funding for a KFW Efficiency House 70 since April of 2016, because in 2016, the federal authorities determined that the standard now represented the new minimum standard in terms of energy efficiency for new buildings, the German government has actually stipulated that every newly built house since 2016 must meet at least the KFW 70 standard. So if you're in the market for a new house, if you've been looking for some time, you are probably familiar with KFW 55, 40, and 40 plus. But the crazy part is just as of this spring, even those have changed. So the first one is the KFW 55, and that was actually the standard that our home was built to. 
Again, the annual primary energy requirement of the KFW Efficiency House 55 is 55% of the energy requirement of a comparable new home in 2009. Houses meeting this standard were eligible for a repayment grant of 18,000 euros per residential unit with a maximum total loan of 120,000 euros, thereby giving you a 15% return. However, I say we're eligible because as of February of this year, the KFW 55 subsidy program is no longer available. So the rationale from the KFW was sort of twofold. The first was that they actually funded a lot of buildings through the KFW 55 program and the money was just quite frankly running out. But the second rationale that they gave was that this efficiency class was actually done so well and achieved so frequently that KFW 55 today in 2022 now is the new standard, the new minimum for all new homes to be built in Germany. And if you recall, the KFW 70 was considered the normalized standard in 2016. So the fact that we've been able to jump to a 55 standard in just six years actually shows a pretty significant jump in efficiency. Now, we actually got pretty lucky because we secured our KFW funding in June of last year. So we're grandfathered in, even though we didn't move into our home until June of this year. We still get to benefit from this subsidy, which is pretty nice. For us, it was actually quite straightforward and quite easy because the builder of our home actually advertised this home as a KFW 55 house. You see, builders too can actually get really attractive financing and subsidies if they work within this program. So in a way, KFW works on both ends of the development process. They incentivize builders to build the standard of homes by giving them attractive loans, and then they also incentivize us to buy the homes with attractive loans. Pretty cool. And all we had to do to secure funding beyond, of course, meeting all the legal and financial pre-qualifications was just agree to pay for a certification of our home once that it was completed. Now, this actually only cost us around 1400 euros to have a professional come to our home and certify that indeed our house does in fact meet the KFW 55 standards. Now, this certificate is great for resale. Of course, I don't think we're moving anytime soon no worries on that. Um, but you know, the other benefit of course is that we do get that 18,000 euros taken off of the principal of our KFW loan, which is fabulous. Like I said, the KFW 55 home program has been phased out and now they're focusing on even greater efficiency. So as of April of this year, the KFW 40 or 40 plus is pretty much going to be the way that you will go if you want KFW funding for privately owned new construction with forward thinking sustainable technologies. However, because this entire program again has proved to be extremely popular, the German federal government has actually cut back a bit. So as of July 2022, when I am recording this video, meeting the requirements for an efficiency house 40 is eligible for a 10% repayment subsidy. So a maximum loan of 150,000 euros will get you eligible costs of up to 15,000 euros of a subsidy off of the principal of your loan. The efficiency house 40 plus, which as you can imagine, has more strict energy sourcing requirements, will actually get you a 12.5% repayment subsidy. So a maximum loan, again, of 150 euros, you can get up to 18,750 euros back. Again, still a very attractive offer, but like we saw with different solar subsidies, you can kind of get the feeling that the government is slowly rolling back the subsidies to offset the cost as the standard of sustainability becomes just that, a standard. However, KFW programs don't end just with new construction. There's also the KFW 124, another financing option that we actually used for our home, but it doesn't actually have any sustainability or green technology commitments tied to it. It's just a normal loan of up to 100,000 euros that has a 2.78 annual interest rate. 
This changes a little bit if you want a five year or 10 year fixed interest rate. And of course this changes with inflation. So again, this is the data that I'm getting on the day that I'm recording this video. Just be sure to check their website. But the cool part about this loan is that it can be used for new construction or the purchase of an existing house. And it can even go towards renovation costs. The only real stipulation is that you have to live in the property yourself. So you can't rent out this property for income and it can't be like a holiday house. There's also the KFW 134, a program that provides a low interest loan of up to 50,000 euros for the purchase of cooperative shares. And there's also the KFW 424, also known as Bau Kindergeld, which is a grant for the first time purchase or construction of owner occupied residential property for families and single parents with children in the form of a grant. Okay guys, so before we wrap up this video, I did want to mention that the German federal government has actually announced that they're going to be rolling out new subsidies to support sustainable home building technology in 2023. So although we are actually wrapping up our home buying building experience, it's not something again that we plan on doing anytime soon. Um, I love housing. This is a subject that I'm really passionate about. So you know that I will be looking for different news reports about this in the future. And if I learn anything, I'll make sure to share it with you on the community tab in YouTube. But guys, I would also love to hear from you down in the comment section. What are some different sustainable technologies, building solutions that you've actually implemented in your home? Are there any programs that you're actually kind of interested in participating in to make your home just a little bit greener? And because so many of these subsidies and programs roll out and roll back in, <laughs> are there any specific programs that you would actually like to see brought back? If so, what would those be? Please let me know down in the comment section. I love hearing from you and I think it could be kind of cool if we could share amongst ourselves different programs and projects that we can all benefit from. And as always guys, if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button. And for more content from the Black Forest family, hit that subscribe button. So until next time, cheers.